Africa, we then send enforcement officers who are alien to the land and not utilize these people. So how then can we uh, utilize forest communities to manage their forests, pay for it, and get them to, and they will protect the forest because they are drawing on a more sustainable model uh, on the forest usage. That is the dilemma that we have. Uh, do we just leave the forest communities and the rural communities as they were, or do we want to bring development to them? You know, the, 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 this, this seems to be the dilemma. And if you want to uh, give them the, uh, the development as, as we think of, is it uh, Western development? What sort of culture? I think we are uh, not in shortage of good examples of best practices when it comes to you know, uh, balancing environment and development. For instance, the state of Sabah is well known internationally for its conservation efforts. Mm -hmm. What is needed now is uh, mechanisms to scale up all these best practices. And I think this is where government should come in uh, with the help from the private sector. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. That's all the time that we have. It was a pleasure having all of you to share your insights on how to bridge the divide between rural and urban area. And I also to say a big thank you to Tanzini at G-Tower for hosting us in this uh, lovely place here. And thank you to the audience. Thank you for catching and tuning in to the ninth Mudeka Award Roundtable. Once again, I'm Cynthia Ng, and we'll see you again next time. This program was brought to you by the Merdeka Award, an initiative to promote excellence by ExxonMobil, Petronas and Shell.